Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. If you, this is episode 564, and I'm Kristen Omdahl. We're live here in my backyard in beautiful Southwest Florida. If you have any questions for me, please feel welcome to always say hello. You can leave a comment while we're live, and you can get replies for me and everybody else in our lovely community joining us. And if you end up watching the recorded version, which a lot of people do, um, you can leave comments there as well. And I do reply to those throughout the day too. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, let's see, so if you have any questions, please feel welcome to ask. Hi, Grace. Hi, Judy. Hi, Gina. Hi, Julie. Yes, these colors are pretty magical back here. I agree. Hi, Judy. Hi, Dave. Oh, baby Bjorn wants to say hello. Hi, buddy. We've got birds this morning, too. Hi, Crochet and Knit Tuts. Hi, Naomi. Thanks for joining live, everybody. Hi, Gay. Ah, Bjorn, you're getting hellos, too, honey. Mm -hmm. so, oh, and Becker's over there. They're both out here, just being a little shy still. Hi, Grace. Is anybody crafting with me this morning? I am working on, if you've been watching the Create Zen videos where we've been going to the beach and doing those sunset videos, um, gosh, I can't wait to do those again when the beach is open back up, but you might recognize that this is a motif that I've been working on during those videos and I'm working on creating a fabric out of these um, beautiful motifs and I'm hoping at some point today that maybe I can show you how to do a two-sided join and also how to do one of the mini motifs that you put between the big motifs to turn it into a magical fabric. So if I can get to that today, I will. Um, someone's asking about my earrings. These are the Alicia crochet earrings from 52 crochet gifts. You can also find a video tutorial for them here on my YouTube channel, and you can uh, download the pattern individually on my website. If you don't want the whole book, if you do want the book, you can get it as uh, an ebook or a paperback book and you can get it autographed on my website or you can get it on Amazon all over the world. Um, yeah, Dave, it doesn't matter how close I am to the beach at the moment, but I'm not allowed to go there. But uh, I am uh, a long walk, a medium bike ride, or a short car drive to the beach. I did drive by the other day just out of curiosity to see what a closed beach looks like. And man, are they taking it seriously. There's a metal bar barricade in front of all of the beach openings with a police car behind the barricade with the sirens, not the sirens, the lights flashing and a police officer standing like this next to his car. So it's very militant looking, very serious looking. Um, and I just kept on driving. <laughs> not that I was gonna go, but you know, it was kind of on my way back from getting gas and whatever I was doing. So anyway, someone was asking me about these earrings also, are they uh, heavy? And no, they are not heavy at all. These are done in Be So Fine yarn, which is my fingering weight bamboo yarn. They are very light, even though they have a lot of volume. And that's what I've talked about a lot in the other earrings that I've made over the years in Be So Fine yarn. You can make big earrings that look like that big statement earring that we all love. Well, maybe not all of us, I love, but my ear lobes or the, my ear piercing holes can't take the weight anymore. They've been pulled on for way too long over the years and they can't hold heavy earrings. So for me, the best solution is using really fine yarn and making statement earrings that look like they're big and bold and heavy, but they're not heavy at all. So to answer your question, these are not heavy, even though they make a big, bold statement. And that is what I absolutely love about crocheting earrings in fine yarn, specifically in Be So Fine Yarn. And you can find tons of earring patterns here on tutorials here on my YouTube channel and a bunch of them on my uh, website. Does anybody have any other? I've also put a link to, um, I've also put a link to this pattern in the video description already this morning, and I posted a link to uh, the blog post explaining uh, the sale. I've got a big sale going on this week, so if you 
need supplies to be crafty at home right now, I have them and I've got tons of stuff on sale. So if you want to check that out, that's also in the video description already. Uh, hi, Edna. I missed some names. Uh, yeah, the earrings do match my garden, Grace. You're right. Hello from Russia. Glad to see someone here from Russia. I know we get people from all over the world here and it's so wonderful. Somebody, um, uh, I noticed somebody was here from England this morning too. Wonderful. Oh, and Edna's here from India. So I know we get people from all over our country here in the U.S. and all over the world. And I'm so happy to see so many of you join me here for creativity and positivity. We need it all the time, let alone when times get scary. It's all the more important to focus on any amount of positivity and creativity we can. Um, no, the earrings are not heavy at all to wear. I was just explaining a few minutes ago that they're made with very light yarn, and that is the absolute wonderful part about crocheting earrings with light yarn is that you get that look of big bold earrings without the weight that normally comes with them crocheting earrings is by far the best way to create big bold earrings um uh yes christine i am making progress on the eggplant sweater as i have mentioned in the past there's so much more work to do besides just crocheting something. Um, I have to draw all the charts and write all the patterns and size it in all the different sizes and then go through the tech editing process and photography, but definitely working really hard on it behind the scenes and it will be out soon. Thank you for your excitement. Hi from Germany. Ah, we've got someone from Canada here. Wonderful. Yeah, wonderful to see so many people coming together. Love it. So happy to have you all here. Okay, I'm going to keep, wait, help, um, if you have questions, please feel welcome to ask them. I want to get a little further on this motif. I'm all second to last round, which means once I get to the last round, I can tip the camera down and show you how to join uh, this motif on a two-sided join. Petra's asking if I've ever mentioned what software I use to create crochet charts. Yes, I've mentioned it many times. I use Adobe Illustrator, which is the professional software program that is the industry standard for all graphic designers. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining live. Hi, Sabrina or Sabine. So I've got one more road to go here, or one more round to go here, and I think you might enjoy seeing how I join this on two sides. Unfortunately, I didn't plan my outfit very well for this. I'm wearing light colored clothes, and this is light colored yarn. I might have to figure out something to put on my lap first, or we'll see how it works. Also, not something that I recommend to doing this type of work on your lap. It's much easier to do this type of work on a table top if you have one. Like we've talked about in other videos, when you have a table surface, it's almost like having an extra pair of hands. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining live. Hey, baby Bjorn. Hi, Janet. Thanks for joining live. So what's everybody else working on this morning? Is anybody else crocheting or knitting? Uh, thanks, Christine. I thought so too. I thought that there was enough coral and pink in my top to pull together the earrings. Stacy's working on crocheting a summer t-shirt. That's wonderful. Yep, summer will be here before you know it. So a good time to start on your summer stuff too. And the holidays will be here before you know it. If you want to get caught up on gifts, this would be a great time to get caught up on gifts as well. I've got tons and tons of patterns for gift making if you need some inspiration. Uh, Petra's using Be So Baby yarn to create a summer top. That's awesome. What am I working on? Someone's asking. I am working on 
creating a fabric out of these beautiful large medallion motifs and I'm debating whether or not I'm going to make a top like I'm wearing or a dress. So I haven't decided yet. I, I need to make a big old fabric either way. So I figure I need to just keep making motifs. So what I'm working off of is I have a chart for the medallion and then I have this secondary chart which shows me how, which not shows me, um, it would show you, I made it, so I just, uh, anyway, this mini motif in the middle is what pulls the fabric together for these motifs, and that's what turns it from, see, because when they're joined, there's going to be a hole in the middle, and I'll show you that when I join this fourth one, and to, that's not practical for a fabric, right? You don't want a fabric that has holes big enough to fit your fist through it. So in order to create a motif fabric with a motif like this, you need to make mini motifs to fit into the center. So I'm hoping today that I can get through this round of the fourth motif to show you a two-sided join, and then maybe even do that mini thing in the middle. If I clear everything off of my fire pit table here, I could probably use this surface. Um, yeah, let me just get a little further in the motif and then we can do that. Okay, so what was the next round? The next round is, uh, that's right. I'm slightly modifying this pattern as I go to, so you can see that I'm, you can see my head is kind of, uh, my wheels are spinning as I'm reading the chart, and that's just because I have, um, I'm making some modifications to this. This is actually a chart that I used for a different shawl pattern called the Doreen Shawl in Motif Magic, and so I'm slightly modifying it to do something different for this dress slash poncho. <laughs> I haven't decided what it's going to be yet. And so as I'm moving along here, uh, thinking of things like that. Okay, so moving along, we're on the final round now. And so if you have any questions, please feel welcome to ask them. And I'm going to work a little further along here until we, and then once I get to a point where it's close to finishing, I'll turn the camera down and show you on the table what I'm doing. In the meantime, I had uh, another idea I wanted to um, share with you and see what you all were thinking about. And what would you think, remember how like in old fashioned radio talk shows uh, that you would listen to on the radio, there'd be call in sessions. And I was wondering, what would you think of me calling people live on the air here. So if let's say that we were going to do a live call in session, but it will be the opposite of that because I'll be doing the calling. If I set it up where if you emailed me your phone number and told me that you'd be available between nine and 10 on any given morning here, um, that like, let's say we did it tomorrow and I told everybody today to if you were interested in asking me questions and talking to me live and being on speakerphone so everyone in the live stream podcast could also hear the conversation, would you be interested in getting a phone call from me? Gina says that's an excellent idea. So I just wanted to throw that out there and see what you guys thought, if you would find it fun or interesting to uh, have me call you live while we're on the air. Okay, I'm seeing some people say they're too shy. That's totally okay. And I see some people saying that's a good idea. It's not for everybody, right? Not everybody likes to be, um, and, you know, not everybody likes public speaking or being in front of an audience. And I totally understand that, which it might still be fun to listen to because um, chances are when people ask questions, it's often questions that you have as well. But I thought it might be fun to get a phone call um, 
and have, you know, have some questions for me, perhaps. So uh, that's okay, Dave. Anybody that feels too shy to do it, that's okay. Because you know what else? Sometimes things sound scary before you see it done. And some of you may also still be scared when you hear other people do it. But some of you might find that it's not as scary once you hear other people do it. So I was thinking we could maybe try it tomorrow. And then if it goes well, we could figure out a day where we do that once a week. So since I'm seeing enough people say, yes, that sounds kind of fun, here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. If you are interested in me calling you live on the air, all you need to do is email me at projectkristincares at gmail.com with your phone number. And it, you'd have to be available between nine and 10 tomorrow morning. And so when we're live on the air here, I will, with a second phone or a second camera, however I do that, I will be calling on speakerphone so that you can, you can talk to me and everybody else that joins us live can hear the conversation. <laughs> uh, nope, whatever questions you have, Whatever questions you have, um, I'll do whatever. I, if I can answer, great. If I can't, then, uh, you know, that <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> but if I can, I will. But no, there will be no advance notice for me, uh, and there will be no subject matter you have to stick to if you have a question for me, or you just want to say hi, or you just want to chat for a minute. It's okay. Uh, yeah, if you just want to say hi and chat for a minute, that's perfectly fine too. You don't have to have a question. I'm just saying that it's open mic. You can uh, talk to me about anything you want to talk to me about for a couple of minutes. And we'll try to get in. If there's enough phone numbers that I get in email tonight or today, then um, I'll try to get to as many as I can tomorrow during um, in an hour. Well, Gina, you wouldn't you wouldn't actually hear your voice if you're on the phone, I suppose. But um, you know, it's it's up to you. I, there's no pressure here. If it's something that you'd like to do, great. If it's something you would not like to do, that's fine too. If it's something you'd like to watch other people do, that's fine too. There's no uh, there's no pressure here on in any way, shape, or form. I just thought some people might like to get a phone call from a friendly voice. That's all. <laughs> So if you're interested in doing, uh, getting a phone call from me tomorrow, live on the air, all you have to do is email me at projectkristincares at gmail.com and leave your phone number. That's it. Pretty simple. No problem, Melanie. I'm glad you're working. That's wonderful. And again, no pressure in this. If it goes well, we'll do it again. Yeah, it's a completely non-judgmental group here. Grace is right. So if anybody feels like calling, uh, getting a phone call from me, great. If you don't, that's fine too. There is no pressure here. It might be entertaining, it might not. And we'll try it once. If we love it, we'll do it again. If we don't love it, um, we won't do it again. <laughs> uh, Janet, I don't know anything about Zoom. I've heard about it, but I haven't done anything with that yet. Yes, Julie, I'm going to put the caller on speakerphone so everybody can hear the call. That is correct. It will be shared with all of you. Yes. Yep. Yep, it'll be totally public. Publicly, sh I'll have a phone here and speakerphone on, and I'll be talking to that person, and you all will get to be a part of it. Uh, uh, yes, Sabine, if you're interested in chain plying is what that was called, where you take one ball of yarn and turn it into three strands, it's called chain plying. And if you search that here on my YouTube channel, you can find a wonderful video about chain plying. That is true. Okay, and I'm probably, it's probably time to start joining these. So let me fix my table here. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I'm gonna put some stuff on the ground. See, we'll put that project down. I think we'll move this one to the floor. I'll keep my computer up here so I can still see comments while I am doing this. 
Okay. And remove these. And let's grab, bring this closer. Okay, how's that look? Oops. <laughs> I'm in my own way here now. I didn't plan this out, we're just doing, we're experimenting now, so. Thanks for your patience while I figure this out. I think it really will be wonderful if I do figure it out though. How's that? Pretty good, right? Yeah, that's gonna be pretty good. Okay, so, whoops, I do need the crochet hook. <laughs> Thank you, Kimberly, I appreciate that very much. I'm working as hard as I possibly can to try to keep people together and keep people positive and creative. Thank you for appreciate. thank you for noticing. Okay, so. All right, so here's our three motifs that are already joined, okay? So we're going to be joining this fourth motif here, okay? So if you've never done a two-sided join before, hopefully this will make it look a little less intimidating to you. And if you have, it's never a bad reminder to watch this. Um, I'm working with Be So Baby Yarn and Colorway E-Crew today. Hi, Julia, this is your first time on the chat. Wonderful, thank you so much. Okay, so how we're joining these is we have these shells of four double crochet, chain three, four double crochet, and we're joining them to those shells on adjacent motifs. So when you're joining in a chain three, you do a chain one, slip stitch chain one to count as that chain three. The way these motifs are joined, I can show you on the chart really quickly here. We join in two shells, then we skip two shells, then we join in the next two shells so that we'll have two shells exposed on each of the motifs. So here, we're gonna, join, we're gonna skip these two, come down here, we're gonna join in this motif, then in this motif, then skip all the way around here, skip these two and join in this motif and this motif. So we're on our working motif now and I've done my first four double crochets. I'm gonna do a chain one, slip stitch into the next chain on the adjacent motif. Okay, I'm doing this a little weird here. Let me, I'm trying to keep my arms <laughs> not in the way of the tripod and also trying to keep everything flat on the table for you to see. So if it looks like my positioning is weird, it's just because I'm trying to show you as much as possible while I do it. You wouldn't be having to show an audience while you do it, so you could pick your work up a little bit more and not look so awkward. So don't worry about the awkward nature here. I'm trying to show you as much visual as possible. Hi, Migdalia and Christy and Joe. Thanks for joining live, everybody doing a quick demo on two-sided joining of motifs. And then after that, we're going to do a mini motif in the center here that's gonna show you how to transform a motif, uh, a joining of motifs into an amazing fabric. Okay, so we've done our first join and I'm gonna set it down now so you can see. And then at this point, you definitely wanna double check that you're on the right motif. We wanna join to and skip to, because if you get your, you know, work all the way around and then go to join in the middle here and you notice there aren't eight shells to work into, you got a problem. So you always wanna set your work down and double check when you're working in motifs. All right, we're ready for the next one here. So we're gonna do four double crochets. What do you guys think? Is this not so bad of a setup for a live demo? Is this working okay for you to see? And then we'll do a chain, four double crochets, chain one, slip stitch into the next chain three. On the adjacent motif, chain one, and then coming back to our working motif, four more double crochets in the same chain three space. Somebody new is asking what we're working on today. I'm doing a live demo on doing a two-sided join in uh, motifs 
and then how to create a mini motif in the center where to fill up this hole to create a magical fabric. All right, so we've got two sides joined here. So the joining of that motif is complete. Single crochet here, and then we're going to work the next two shells without joining. Sorry, my leg keeps bumping the tripod. I'm gonna try to not touch it. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Dave. The rug is a hand-me-down from a friend. But it works really well out here. I love how this table is such high contrast with the yarn. It really makes the yarn pop when you can see it pretty well. Okay, so we've got one shell done without joining. So now we'll do a second shell without joining. And remember, we want a total of eight shells in the center here that aren't joined, because that's what we're going to use when we join our mini motif in the center. And you're gonna be amazed at how incredibly well adding a mini motif into these big holes is going to transform this into a fabric where you almost can't tell which part is a motif and which part is a different motif. You'll see, I'll, <laughs> it doesn't sound very, that doesn't make much sense. I'll show you when we get there. Okay, so we've got our two unjoined. So now when we get to the next shell, we're going to join it to this motif. But remember, we want two shells unjoined. So we're gonna come back here to where it was last joined. Make sure we skip these two and join in this one. And even once you start this next shell, it is never a bad idea to set your work down and make sure you're working into the same spot. Okay, so we'll skip two, come to this one, slip stitch into the chain three. Okay, we'll start our last joining shell. Whoops. Okay, but I'm, like I said before, it's not, there is no failure here in setting your work down to double check you're in the right spot. It is always better to double check um, instead of making a mistake. So I want to make sure that I'm working into this motif. So we did a chain one slip stitch into the next adjacent chain three space, chain one. So we did chain one, slip one, chain one. That counts as our chain three. Then come back to our working motif and finish our shell with four more doubles in the same space. We've almost finished our motif. How wonderful. Does anybody have any questions about this as I'm going? I'd really love to demystify motifs for you if you've been intimidated about working with them. They make such amazingly beautiful fabric and uh, if you've never worked with motifs before, um, really, really fun way to crochet because you can make small pieces and join them as you go. I'm gonna cut my yarn here and fasten off. Okay, so although these are really beautiful motifs, can you tell how this isn't very practical for a garment because of that giant hole? I mean, it's almost the size of my whole hand. That's not practical at all for a, um, a garment. You wouldn't want to wear something with that kind of a hole. So what I'm suggesting here is that by adding a secondary mini motif in the center of that, you can turn this into an incredible fabric 
So I have one here on the chart and I'm gonna put that off to the side so I can read it and show you how to make that mini motif and then how to join it to this hole in the middle of the motifs. And you're gonna be blown away <laughs> by how beautiful um, it fills that hole. So we'll start with tying our yarn to our crochet hook. In fact, we can move these off to the side for a minute because we won't need them until we get to the final round. Annette, I am showing how to, I showed first of all how to do a two-sided join of these motifs. And now I'm gonna show you how to do a mini motif to fill up that hole and turn it into a beautiful fabric. Now I gotta try to get on camera. So chain five, slip stitch to join and create a ring. Here we go. Chain six counts as a double crochet chain three and double crochet in the ring. And so this round is going to be double crochet chain three and we want a total of eight of these. So you want a total of eight double crochets and eight chain threes before you join. If you have the book motif magic, you do have this particular chart that shows you the large motif and the mini joining motif. If you have um, already have the Doreen crochet shawl pattern, you also have this chart and chart uh, the chart for the large motif and the mini one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. Okay, our first round is done. And so now we're gonna come and do the second round. Let me re look at my chart again. Oh, this is an easy one. So we're going to uh, slip stitch into the chain three space, chain one, single crochet, chain five. And so the second round is chain five. The second round's repeat is chain five and single crochet in the chain three space. You know, repeat that all the way around. Yes, Annette, it does look like Moroccan tiles. When I design crochet motifs, I'm very much inspired by Moroccan tile work. In fact, sometimes I just Google Moroccan tile work and look at the different patterns to get inspiration. I would have so much fun going to Morocco and studying the colors and the tapestries and the tile work. I love the food too. Okay, second round is finished. So let me refer to my chart again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're ready to join now. So on our third and final round, our mini motif. I'm having a hard time getting around my tripod here. Let's see. I moved the camera just a little bit. I can get myself in there a little better. Yes, Harvisha, that's what I just said. It's the Doreen motif from Motif Magic. That is correct. But this time I'm making a dress or a poncho, I'm making something, uh, something more like a garment for this one. So we're gonna slip stitch into the first chain five space, chain one, and single crochet in the same stitch. Now we're going to be joining we're gonna be joining in 12 places here. We're gonna be joining a chain seven into each of the exposed shells, and we're going to be joining a chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a chain 15 in each of the joins. So it's gonna be chain 15 in the joins, chain seven in the exposed shells, then chain 15 in the joins. So I'll show you what that means when, um, well, let's we'll just get started. So a chain seven is really, for joining, is really a chain three slip stitch. Chain three, right? So the chain three slip stitch chain three is the equivalent of a chain seven. And then we'll single crochet in the next chain five space. And then chain three, 
slip stitch in the next chain three space, chain three, whoops, and single crochet in the next chain five space. Then a chain 15 is going to be chain seven, chain seven, slip stitch into the join where two motifs were joined, or two, yeah, with, in a shell. And I'll set the work down after this one so you can see what I'm talking about. Chain seven. And single crochet in the same chain five space. And I'm gonna set my work down so you can see what I've done here. Move my crochet hook too. Okay, remember we have only eight exposed shells here, right? And we have only eight chain five spaces in the last round of that motif. So in order to join in 12 spaces, the eight exposed and the four joined, we're going to be single crocheting twice in one of, in one chain five space for each repeat. So the repeat is chain five, a chain five join, single crochet in the next chain five space, or sorry, a chain seven join, single crochet in the next chain five space, a chain seven join, single crochet in the next chain five space, then a chain 15 join, and single crochet in the same chain five space. So in order to create three joins from two <laughs> spaces, we gotta work a second time into one of them. And you know, sometimes people like things conceptually and sometimes people don't. So for those of you that like conceptual learning, that's explaining what we're doing. For people that just want to be, that just want to hear the instructions, we'll just keep going too. All right, so we're ready to do this. That was the whole repeat. So we're gonna do that whole repeat four times total. So it's chain three, the chain seven join is a chain three, slip stitch into the adjacent motif, chain three space, chain three. That chain three slip stitch chain three counts as our chain seven for a chain seven join. We'll do that a second time. Oops. And if I can answer questions while I'm doing this, I will. If your question's important and I miss it, please feel welcome to uh, ask it again in the comments when the uh, live stream broadcast goes recorded. Okay, so it's time to do the chain 15 join, which is a chain seven. Slip stitch into the join of the two, between the two motifs. Chain seven. So chain seven slip stitch, chain seven is the equivalent of it for the chain 15 join, and then single crochet in the same chain five space. And I'll set my work down again here so you can see how it's so beautifully closing up that hole. Isn't that amazing, right? So now we'll do this repeat two more times. And if you have any questions, please feel welcome to ask me. And I'm hoping that this doesn't look as scary as it sounded, right? These are all really simple stitches. Set that down again so you can see we have three sides joined now. Isn't that incredible? And now we'll do our repeat our fourth and final time. Lily, I'm uh this is a motif project I've been working on for a while, just trying to create a larger fabric. Haven't decided if it's going to be a dress or a poncho yet. 
um, but either way it's going to require a lot of motifs joined together so I'm hoping that as I create some more fabric here I get inspired to turn it into uh, either a dress or a skirt or a poncho but either way still have to join a lot of motifs together so I figured I'd just get started and let the fabric speak to me and I'm hoping even after this Part, part where you finally get to see what the fabric looks like. You can't really tell on one motif what something's going to look like, but once you get to the point where you've got a fabric going, especially because this one needed large motifs and mini motifs in the center, I thought that it was better to let the fabric speak to me once it's become a fabric. And this is the very beginning of it as a fabric. Honestly, if I kept going so you could see a couple of the mini motifs, you would start to definitely, um, it'll definitely start speaking to me then. But look at that. Now I'm going to turn the camera around and lift this up again, but isn't that incredible? Incredible the way that we have transformed something that looked completely unpractical for a garment into some and imagine if I did the fabric on the diagonal like this This is actually what my vision is for it as a fabric that it would be Joined on the diagonal like this where this motif faces that way from top to bottom now I'll move move the camera so I can show you what I mean Hi <laughs> Okay, so as we're making them, this is the way, oh, it looks even cuter once you lift it up. So this is the way it looks when they're sitting in square formation. Once they go to di diamond formation, this is the way it looks. So, like I said, I need to, I mean, once I get to, this is a two by two square, once I get to a three by three square, three large motifs wide by three tall, I'll be able to envision what this would look like as this kind of a piece or as a skirt. You'll be able to envision it as a fabric so much better the more we have together. So, I, and I feel like a nine grid, three wide by three tall is not going to compromise any of those types of projects that I'm talking about whether it's a skirt, a dress, or um, a poncho, you're, there's gonna need to be a nine by nine grid <laughs> in order to make any of those larger type garments. So either way, um, I'm not gonna have to unravel anything out to see what it looks like, but I, I just, I was so excited to show you that because I really thought that doing the demo live was gonna really allow you to see what I'm talking about, how you can turn a large motif into a fabric just by adding a simple little mini motif in the center. So gorgeous. <laughs> ah, now, if I just had all day to work on this, and uh, I have other things to do first, but I sure would like to get back to it. Uh, thank you, Margaret. This My tunic is, uh, there's this one aisle at Marshall's, or TJ Maxx or Marshall's, one of those stores, I get them mixed up, um, that I love, and it's right next to the bathing suit. It's the beach cover-up section, and sometimes I just go over there and look for beach cover-ups to wear as tops or as dresses, and um, when you get back to shopping, if you like this style of top, like caftans and ponchos, you know, um, What's that lady? Mrs. Roper clothes from Three's Company. Does anybody remember Mrs. Roper in uh, on Free, Three's Company? I love to dress like this. I love loose, flowy, bohemian stuff. Not all the time, but it's definitely one of the looks that I love. And the way that I do that normally is either making crochet stuff or knit stuff, or also um, buying beach cover-ups and wearing them as clothes. So you can see that this one it's too low here to wear as a top because it's meant to wear over a bathing suit and it's pretty open on the sides too but there's nothing wrong with throwing it over a tank top and similar colored jeans and you can see my whole outfit hey, little sneakers skinny jeans tank top and beach cover-up and i've got my this is roper vibe going on today <laughs> I don't mean that in a bad way. I love Mrs. Roper. 
Chrissy was my favorite on Three's Company, but Mrs. Roper is definitely my vibe sometimes for uh, clothing. <laughs> Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> She'd be proud. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Lisa. You know, I've been thinking about looking up some old 1970s sitcoms this week for, you know, background music while I work. And I don't know if any of you have done that before. I find old TV shows to be very comforting. And uh, this is a good time to find things that bring comfort to us, right? I think that's why I always go back to Charlie's Angels because it's so comforting and it reminds me of um, my youth or, I don't know, a different time. And so I've been thinking about looking up Three's Company. I'd like to watch um, Welcome Back, Cotter again. I would definitely like to watch The Jeffersons right now. And I would like to watch, what's the other one? Love to watch Sanford and Son again. What else? What other shows? Do you guys watch any of those old shows? I saw um, the Andy Griffith show the other day and it was adorable. I couldn't believe how adorable it is now. The Golden Girls, love that show. Sabine's watching Baywatch from the 80s. That sounds awesome. <laughs> Annette Starsky and Hutch, all right. Mary Tyler Moore and Rhoda. Yes, Thea, that's a good idea too. One Day at a Time, yes, the Golden Girls and Friends. Anne's from the 70s. Uh, the music's fun too, yes. Happy Days, Gilligan's Island, yes, these are all great ideas. Uh, oh, Thea says they're on YouTube. I was That was my next question. Does anybody know if the whole seasons or episodes were on Netflix or Amazon or um, on demand or... Sounds like I'm seeing it on YouTube. Oh, the Brady Bunch. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm, I've got an urge to watch 1970s wholesome TV right now. So I'm going to look up something new. Something new. Bold and beautiful. I used to watch Days of Our Lives when I back in the 80s. The Nanny, I loved that show too, yes. I didn't watch That Girl or uh, Get Smart. I don't know those. Uh, Magnum P.I., love watching that one still. Joe, you still watch Days, that's awesome. Are Bo and Hope still on there? Are they together? I looked up, um, so anybody that watches Days of Our Lives, does anybody remember when Bo saved Hope from marrying someone? way back in like in the 1980s and he took off he took her with the in her wedding dress took her on the back of his motorcycle and they sang that song holding out for a hero oh my god every time i hear that song i think of them <laughs> uh -huh. you know you can watch old you can watch old um soap operas on youtube too dallas yes and dynasty I watched the remake of Dynasty Real re recently, and I actually liked it. It was a little campy, but sometimes campy's good. Yeah, that's true. No one ever dies on Days of Our Lives. That's Yay, Joe doesn't feel as intimidated by motifs after watching that demo today. Wonderful. So like when this pattern comes out, I'll be able to show you a proper video tutorial as well. So that will definitely help. But just today, I thought maybe doing something live and impromptu would just give you a feel for it. You know, you don't always have to be learning while doing. Sometimes it's good to just see something because then the more times you see it, the more likely you are to pick it up eventually. So sometimes it's good to conceptually watch a process before you actually try to do it. So I'm hoping that that was helpful today. Ah, Robert, everyone loves Raymond. That was good too, yes. There's been a lot of good TV over the years. <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions for me? Ah, Carol Burnett show. Talk about funny. I loved that show. That was great too. All right, so just a quick recap. If you want to uh, if you want me to call you live on the air tomorrow, 
then you need to email me at projectkristincares at gmail.com with your phone number. Oh, the love boat. Yes, I agree. I love that one too. Um, just email me today with your phone number. And um, depending on how many phone numbers I receive, I will try to um, call as many people as I can tomorrow. And if you have questions for me, fine. If you just want to chat for a couple minutes, that's fine too. Just know that it will be on speakerphone and we'll be sharing the conversation with everybody live on the podcast. And uh, right now, instead of choosing one quote randomly from one of the seven Create, Share, Inspire notebooks, I'm going to share one quote from all seven. The birds sound so pretty right now, don't they? Okay, we just read that one yesterday. Okay, so first we're looking at uh, Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 1. And this quote is from Helen Keller. What I am looking for is not out there, it is in me. That's always one of my favorite ones. In fact, I uh, had a conversation about that with Marlon last night. Very cool. Then this is Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 2. And we will randomly, ah, oh, let's see. Ooh, this one's from Buddha. There are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. Oh, I give this advice to people all the time who ask me about like business advice and career advice. Uh, gotta start and then you gotta never give up. And that's great advice for anybody about anything anyway, but I find that when people ask me business and career advice, this is always the, the gist that I go after is that you got to start and you never give up. So thank you, Buddha. There are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. Love it. Okay, this is Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 3. These are all on sale for half off this week on my website too. And we just read that one yesterday. Oh, this is great. This is a Chinese proverb. A flower in the heart blossoms on the surface. It's always about finding a way to get, um, finding a way to find some peace and find some positivity on the inside. Anytime you can be in control of your emotions on the inside, it spreads to the rest of the world. I love this one. A flower in the heart blossoms on the surface. So simple, but so beautiful. Um, this is Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 4. And we'll randomly pick a quote. Ooh, this is by Francis of Assisi. A single sunbeam is enough to drive away many shadows. Again, one little tidbit of positivity can spread to so many other people in so many ways, more than you will even ever know. Thank you, Francis of Assisi. A single sunbeam is enough to drive away many shadows. Love it. And this is Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 5. This one's by Jonathan Swift. May you live all the days of your life. Yes, 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 yes. Do something that you wanted to do on any given day, you know, we all have these bucket list goals, right? Of things we want to learn and things we want to do. You know, now's a good time to learn something new or try something new. You have the whole world of YouTube and Google. You could, if you wanted to learn a new language, you could right now. If you wanted to learn a new crafting technique, anything. If you wanted to learn meditation for the first time, do some beginner yoga. There's so much, anything that's on your bucket list of self-improvement is available at your fingertips right now. So even though it's really easy to be sad and scared and lonely with self, uh, social distancing, we still have the ability to live our lives and do something that we really wanna do even during this time. So thank you, Jonathan Swift. May you live all the days of your life. And I definitely wish that for all of you. May you live every day of your life and make every single one count. Even if it's just doing one act of kindness or learning one thing for yourself, the possibilities are endless, Annette, I agree. This is Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 6. Ooh, this is powerful. This is by Confucius. 
It is more shameful to distrust our friends than to be deceived by them. This one, this one takes a little while to process. I mean, it really does, but it's absolutely true. I'd rather live my life trusting people and dealing with the deception if it comes up because I do believe more people are good than bad out there and I do believe there's good in everybody. We are all more alike than we are different. So this is a great way to remind yourself to be open and pure in your heart to start with. I love it. Thank you, Confucius. It is more shameful to distrust our friends than to be deceived by them. Powerful stuff. All right, and our seventh and final issue for this morning, Create, Share, Inspire Notebook, Volume 1, Issue 7. <laughs> Another theme that we touched on once this morning. This is by Mark Twain. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. So whether you want to learn some sort of, some sort of self-improvement or crafting improvement or learning a new skill or anything, Try something new today. Do something that um, brings you peace, brings you uh, calmness, empowers you, inspires you. There's so many different ways that you could find something. Read a book that you've always wanted to read and never got around to reading. Draw something, color something, work on a crochet motif that you've never tried before. There's just, the possibilities are endless. So thank you, Mark Twain. The secret of getting ahead is getting started. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my beautiful, colorful backyard, my demo on crochet motifs and show and tell and chatting with me and everyone else here. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.